Okay. Uh, welcome and uh, thank you for having me. Uh, this presentation is uh, called Using Duck Framework in Production. Uh, this is a experience report of how have been, we have been using uh, this framework and also some interesting uh, thoughts about it. So a bit about myself. Uh, my name is Ivan Perdomo. I'm a software developer working uh, professionally since 2001. I'm uh, working at Agvo for the last six years. Um, and uh, I'm using Clojure professionally, not as a hobby, since 2013. I'm based in uh, Pamplona, Spain. But I'm not that crazy to run in front of the bulls. Um, a bit of about Agvo. Agvo is a nonprofit foundation based in Amsterdam. Agvo um, works in the international development aid sector. And this sector can be really, really, really complex. And we aim to help organizations, nonprofits, governments, international organizations uh, to be uh, data driven. So, and for that, Agvo provide a set of services and an open source uh, data platform that allow this organization to capture, clean, process, visualize, uh, and share the data. You can find more about Agvo on that URL. Uh, I want to highlight two parts of the title of the talk. First is about the doc, doc framework. And the first disclaimer here is that I'm not a doc expert. I've used it uh, in several, a couple of uh, projects, but I don't know all the ins and outs about the framework itself. Um, and the other part is when we talk about production, I want to set some expectations that what I'm, when I'm in, in production, I'm, I'm not, or this talk will not talk about the operational side of uh, the application when it's in production. We are uh, talking about the first part, the part that is talk about um, the challenges on uh, having a structure of uh, an application. Okay, if we step back uh, in the history of uh, what ha we have been doing, um, mm -hmm. There was a real issue back in 2013 with one of our uh, applications. Uh, we have some code that was taking too, too long to execute. And this is a, a really, really sketchy draft of what um, we wanted to do for solving that problem to, for our users. And at that time I, I raised my hand and say, hey, I, I think I can, we can, wrap this Java code in a closure HTTP service, et cetera, et cetera, and that will alleviate the pain for you, our users. Yeah, and if, if you can read this, yes, it says applet there. If you don't know what an applet is, it's, it's because you're not too old enough. So uh, that at the time, what we do is what people used to do. So you have an stateful, stateful object, in this case is the uh, HTTP server, in this case, Yeti. And to be able to hold it somewhere, you declare an atom and in your main function, you just reset and that reference goes there. The only reason for doing that is that uh, you can then poke it, no? you can call the close or See, uh, try to see what's what's going on with that right, uh, that stateful object. But then, as functionality uh, gets incorporated in the, into the service, you start to add more things to the main function of your service. In this case, is pretty much the code that we are using. But in this case, we are initializing an scheduler and we are reading some configuration before we actually run the HTTP service. 
So here in code, implicitly, we have a dependency. We cannot start serving HTTP requests if somehow this scheduler, whatever it is, is not initialized. And we cannot start serving HTTP requests if uh, we don't have some configuration available. So here we have an implicit dependency on two or more potentially stateful objects, stateful references, uh, before we can start running our application. So here, the pattern that you see here is that some code somewhere, there is a namespace that is expecting a global var, a public one, and that var is available and is initialized, right? You are expecting something from the environment in this case. In this, uh, in the previous slide, there was some code that was expecting the scheduler to be initialized and that we have somehow some configuration available. If we move in this timeline back in 2013, 14, we start to see uh, blog posts and libraries that try to put a bit more structure to how the dependencies and those stateful objects are handled, right? There was a famous blog post by Stuart Sierra and the component library also about the reload reloadable uh, workload. And the other one is the actual library that implements some of these uh, dependency management uh, and configuration settings. At Agbo, we, we managed to use a component in one service that at the end we didn't put in production for several other reasons, but we started to, to see, okay, the benefits of uh, using component, but as anything, there are trade-offs, no? There are things that uh, a library provides, but what are the trade-offs, what are the downside of it? And the downside on component is that it's not easy to retrofit that library in an existing code base because the system expects that the whole application play by the rules of the library, right? You need to uh, retrofit somehow the, the idea that anything that is stateful needs to be wrapped in a component to be able to get the benefits of uh, the library. And then you start digging into some interesting situations where you want a map, a configuration, and then you want to pass it around uh, to in the dependency tree. And this simple map needs to be wrapped in the component with with a no defined start and stop, that is the contract that, that you have, is just configuration, it's just data. But in, again, in order to, to play well with this system, with this library, you need to wrap it. So again, uh, benefits and trade-offs. So we didn't manage to retrofit a component into the existing code base because what we had was good enough. We, we didn't have too much uh, things that uh, had to be tracked down and we had to uh, live with the service as, as it is. Then uh, if we fast forward early 2016, two years ago, a bit more than two years ago, we had this effort of uh, delivering a new service, a new part of the solution package of Agvo that is called Agvo Lumen. And this one is a, it's a service in, that is in charge of ingesting data, uh, defining transformations about the data, and then being able to visualize and share that data in dashboard and stuff. So we had a, a fixed 
deadline or a tight deadline of uh, delivered an MVP in about five months or so. So we start look around. We started to look around and see what are we going to use for uh, the structure of this new application. We knew we knew that we had we wanted to be to build a monolith because. As you may know, monolith, monoliths are easy to evolve, uh, especially when, when you, you want a rapid cadence in this case. So looking around, we look at uh, Duct, and there was some compelling ideas there. Uh, the idea of a minimal framework um, that was uh, focus on simplicity it was an important and that uh, you had a you had a way of starting a project with some skeleton without uh, reinventing the wheel uh, but we had to choose something some uh, experienced developers were not enthusiastic about the the idea of using a framework because we know that the closure community has been all about libraries and composition, composable uh, libraries. And naively, and without strong argument to choose Duct, we say we need to choose something. Uh, potentially, we could at a time get uh, people with or developers with no with, with uh, no experience in closure to help us between codes. Uh, deliver that MVP. And at the time, the doc had some helper functions to say uh, line doc new endpoint. And this one will create the necessary namespace and the, necess and the appropriate path, basically, just to get a starting point on, on, on giving you a, a skeleton of, of building your new endpoint or a boundary or a component. This, so we delivered the, the MVP, everyone uh, was happy. And the interesting part is that instead of fighting against the framework, that is what usually happens, you start using something and you hit the wall one, twice, and uh, sometimes three times or more. Uh, developers were quite happy because it didn't, uh, I'm quoting, uh, one of them, it doesn't get in your way. So we were able to keep the agility that we had at the starting of the project without uh, noticing basically that uh, the framework was there. But the main drawback or the main point, the main issue is that Duct is, was a still uh, a template. And the issue with templates is that it's like a boilerplate generation type of things where you have, you say today, line new dot uh, my project, and you will get a skeleton of the template at that moment in time, right? Templates are really hard to update. Bug fixes introduced in the template cannot be easily retrofitted or cannot easily be ported to your uh, project if you have evolved um, new features or new yeah new capabilities added to the template like closure script compilation or, or these type of things cannot be added afterwards or cannot be added uh, easily afterwards if the uh, if if the project has evolved right if at the moment that you created your project, you didn't specify that you wanted closure script, closure script completion, um, this uh, is, a, is a painful process. Um, but we, we keep, uh, we keep uh, using that. Uh, and then at some point, uh, based on some conversation of uh, James Reeves, the author of that, with the author of Arachne, uh, we, uh, he released this blog post saying that Doug was going to evolve and that uh, was going to get a new dependency 
injection management or dependency tracking because they something that I didn't mention, but at that time, Doc was based on a component, the Stuart Sierra component. So I got very excited about it because at some point there in the in Doug, in the blog post, it, took, it starts talking about modules. So now the, the scope of the framework is larger. Uh, it, uh, it now has, uh, we, we can say a deep integration with an integrant that is a dependency resolution uh, library from the same author. And the idea uh, is that you have uh, a declaratively, declaratively uh, description of your system in a, in a data structure instead of nesting or a nested code path of system uh, create type of calls. So in, in Doc, there are two uh, important, uh, some, some of the important concepts to, to get uh, or to grasp is that you have this library that is in integrant sometimes, and it, this is true, there is no, there is a blurry uh, path or there is no clear distinction what belongs to integrant and what belongs, what belongs to duct. And uh, the other part is that the, conf uh, the configuration map, that integral map gets transformed using modules. I come from a background where uh, modularity was, was on a strong point and the, the, the use of modules uh, was something appealing to me. I'm not sure if you have seen, but the idea behind integrant and duct is that if your application can be pictured as a, this tree, duct and integrant will be the trunk of the tree and those leaves will be the libraries that uh, compose uh, your, your system, right? The, here the, the analogy is that it's easier to swap or change some leaf on your tree that is, uh, is, is harder to uh, change the trunk of it. So modules, modules, is a, modules are a interesting concept and it's something that uh, uh, in the, in the case, it's an overloaded term. A module means very different thing for the very, very different systems. But in the case of uh, duct, integrant, duct in this case, uh, a module is a pure function, the one that those that we like a lot, that receives a configuration map and returns a configuration map. It's uh, pure, it can declare um, dependencies such that those modules get applied in a dependency order. And the idea is um, if we step back and see the, the pipeline of a duct of, or the initialization of a duct based system is that you have a, an Eden data structure. This can be, can become from a file you can read it uh, from disk, you can read it from a web service or something. Uh, once you read that file, you get a data structure that represents your system. And then there is a phase where the modules, those pure functions get applied. So those functions transform that uh, data structure and you have a new one, a new version of the modified system. And after you have that uh, done, then starts the actual running of the system to end up with a, with a runtime, basically. So remember that I was mentioning that the templates are hard to update. So what is the solution for this? What, are, what is the, at least the, the proposed solution? Uh, for sol solving that particular problem, problem. And these modules, right? Here is where upgradability happens. So in order to add new 
capabilities to your system, what you do is you add a new module to your dependency, like adding a new library to your uh, project COJ. And that module, what it will do is add new capabilities. It could be, as I mentioned, ClojureScript compilation, uh, SAS compilation. Uh, it could be swapping, for example, the, the HTTP server. So the, you start with a template, but the framework evolves with you as you add, change, upgrade uh, modules. So this is the key part on solving the template problem. So it's important to also mention that um, there are modules that do not modify that configuration. It ju they just expose new capabilities. So there are modules that uh, only provide new integrated keys and you can include them in your configuration and start using them. Um, the good thing is that after a painful process of two upgrades in templates, one, one uh, when Doug was still uh, component based that was not based on a configuration it was based on on code on on uh, calling the uh, the component api this then we s switch or we upgraded painfully to use duct uh, using a, a, a eden file for the current the the, the system uh, this is this one was the the first upgrade and now we have done a second upgrade and hopefully the last upgrade on the template side of things where uh, we have we are using uh, duct based on integrant and upgrading or evolving with the framework will be as any closure project uh, it will be upgrading libraries the the minor version major version, major version or whatever gets bug fixes get incorporated to your system as uh, just dependency upgrades. Finally, we can update and evolve without too much effort. And as any engineering efforts, there are uh, uh, trade-offs, there are things that are good and others that are not so much. So on the downside part, Doug suffers uh, something that other community libraries have that are uh, widely used and these that are one man, one man show. So we have one person uh, maintaining um, contributors to, to those libraries in, including Doug are uh, sporadically one or, or, or two bug fixes here and there, but we are relying, or you're relying on the speed uh, of one main maintainer, basically. This is a major one, lack of documentation. So if you search about that, you will find random blog posts here and there talking about how to, how to use it, uh, how can you do, what can you do with that? but there, there is no uh, one official entry point where you can know a lot about the internals and about how, how the system works. There is, there is one docs repository in the, uh, in the organization that has uh, an extensive uh, guide through how to do uh, a web service. Uh, so from starting just with the service, then adding endpoints, then adding database support. And, and it's like a, a lengthy example, but uh, out of that, you are basically on your own. It is true that uh, the code base and the supporting libraries are really, really small and uh, you can <laughs> read the source code if, if you need. 
there is also a uh, with uh, no stable API, meaning uh, in a recent, the most recent version, there will be a backward incompatible change with the modules API, for example. Previously, the modules would declare what other integrand keys they depend on, such that uh, the system can resolve the dependency graph and then uh, go through the pipeline of executing those uh, modules in, in order. And then uh, the most recent one, the modules declare the dependency based on integrand because integrand is already a dependency resolution uh, library. So uh, no uh, again, the, the code that you need to write is not that much. So upgrading is not a huge pain, but it still is something that uh, you know that it could be breaking changes in other words. And definitely, uh, this will, uh, Doug will not help you with the uh, closure error messages, right? Okay, on the upside. So what are the things that uh, you can benefit from using Duct? Um, I'm here quoting an experienced developer here. This is the simplest dependency injection framework I've used. So uh, depending on your background, depending on the years of experience, there are very, very complex frameworks out there. And in the case of integrant, just declaring a multi-method and then just returning whatever you want to return is enough to participate in the, in the integrant and a doc uh, ecosystem or system in this case. Is, uh, it is true that yeah, the author, James Reeves, is an active community member. I have read uh, Reddit threads that hey, we are using the James Reeves stack, right? And this could be another uh, way of exposing. James is, is quite active. He has many, many libraries and he, is, he participates in Clorurians and he is uh, most of the time available. But again, it's a, it could be an issue. Depending on your setup, having the, oh, your team, having the structure of the system declared in an Eden file can help an, uh, an experienced developer or a developer that more, more or less knows how, how the system and libraries work to understand what are the dependencies, what are the, what is this, what the system is doing, right? It, this is if you have a new team member that, that knows a bit about, about the ecosystem. On the other, on the other side, um, if you have a new team member that is new to Clojure, obviously this uh, is not a, a, a compelling reason or this will not solve your problem. And uh, with that, I think that the modules part is the key feature that make Duct an appealing uh, solution for solving the template problem. And that is a framework that evolves with you uh, as your system grows and as your uh, system evolves. And with that, I'll leave it for question. Muchas gracias.